we just got the Weller Hot Tweezer tip. This is the 10 millimeter tip, unlike anything that we have in the shop here. Most of the Hot Tweezer tips that we have in here, they are conical or chisel typed Hot Tweezers used for removing SMD components, whether it's a 201, 402, so on and so forth. But this one is a 10 millimeter Hot Tweezer tip, the biggest thing that we have in the shop here. This is big enough to remove an eight pin uh, BIOS EFI chip off a board. Remember the video I posted three weeks ago that everybody liked where we desoldered solder balls off pads using hot tweezers. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one here, the 10 millimeter hot tweezers tip, and we're going to compare it to the one that we used. The bigger the tip, the greater the heat transfer. So a bigger tip is going to transfer a lot more heat than a smaller tip. And this one should be able to desolder the toughest or the biggest pads that we can find on a motherboard compared to using the other one that we did. A lot of people send me messages and emails asking why the desoldering technique using hot tweezers did not work for them. That could be for a lot of reasons. It could be that their soldering station is not providing enough heat or it could be that the soldering station is providing enough heat but uh, it doesn't compensate for the lost heat that the board absorbs when heat touches the board. As you know, when you put a tip on the logic board, the board will absorb the heat and it will take away from the heat of the soldering tip or the soldering iron. Now, a good uh, soldering station will compensate for that heat. Let's say the soldering iron is set to 420 degrees. As soon as you put that soldering iron on the board, the board is going to start to absorb that heat. So the temperature on the tip itself may go down to 300 degrees rather than 420. Uh, a good soldering station will compensate for that heat and it will give more heat to the tip so it can keep it at a steady 420 degrees regardless to how much heat the board is absorbing. And that could be the reason why you're not able to use this technique properly. Let me show you the 10 millimeter tip that I just got. It looks something like this. I mean, like I said, this is the biggest tip I have in the shop here. I have about four hot tweezers tips. This is the conical tip, which is very tiny. It's used for 201 SMD components or smaller. I have this one here, which is slightly bigger. And I have two more. And I have this one here, which should be good for 805 components. So with this tip here, we should be able to desolder just about anything that we can think of, including ICs, as long as the IC fits within the boundaries of this tip. Let's take a look at this tip under the microscope. It looks something like this. Now, if we close it, it doesn't close fully. And the reason they have this gap here is so that when you grab a big component or an IC with the tweezers, uh, it's going to align vertically and not at an angle. That means more heat transfer onto that component. And that's what it's all about, heat transfer. If we grab the component by just the tips, if we grab a component by just using the very tip of the hot tweezers, then uh, we're going to be losing a lot of heat transfer compared to using this whole surface to grab a component. And that's why they have this gap here. Now, if I want to grab a wick with this hot tweezers, I'm not going to be able to because the wick is going to be much smaller than the opening. So maybe we can grab it from right here. It's the same thing. We're going to grab the wick from here and we're going to see how it does. And what we're going to do is we're going to monitor heat transfer under a thermal cam to see how this will do compared to the other hot tweezer step that we used, which is this one here. I mean, look at this. It's a big difference. This is, you have a huge surface here, which means a lot more heat transfer than just those two tiny tips. Let me grab, let me grab this Samsung board here. I mean, since I discovered this method, that's the only thing I've been using to desolder solder balls off pads because it's the safest and the easiest way to desolder. Let's apply some flux here. So I have this board here with a chip that's already out. Let's apply some flux. Now look at that, wow.
Wow, look at that. Look at how easy it is to desolder solder balls of fats with this tip. That's an even smoother experience than the previous video that we did using the conical tip. This tip, it just wicks like butter. I mean, look at this, look. I, I'm barely touching the wick on the pads. Barely touching the wick. I mean, heat transfer on this tip is out of this world. And it's done. It's done, look at that. Let me clean up. So what have we learned? Bigger tip means more heat transfer. It doesn't matter if you have a small tip with 6,000 degrees set on that tip, it's not gonna be able to desolder big components because heat transfer is not enough. Size of the tip does matter. And with this tip, with the 10 millimeter hot tweezers tip, I was able to go through those solder balls in a breeze. It didn't take long, few seconds, and I was able to remove all the solder balls. We still have few on the sides here, but I did not get to those. That's amazing. I mean, I'm really impressed by this hot tweezers desoldering technique. And now I'm even more impressed with this tip. So what have we learned? A bigger tweezers tip is a smoother process. I mean, I was able to easily desolder solder balls off pads in the previous video, and you can look it up by searching for desoldering with hot tweezers, but it's even better with this bigger tip because there's more heat transfer. And that's why I got this 10 millimeter hot tweezers tip for the sake of using it to desolder, maybe dealing with bigger pads or bigger solder balls and to desolder big components, and I can also use it to desolder ICs. So the process was extremely easy. We were able to desolder the solder balls off pads in a breeze a lot faster than we did last time. I mean, I can tell the difference between using the last tip that we used in the previous video, which is the conical tip, and this tip. This one, I'm barely touching the wick on the pads and solder is coming right off. Of course, you need a good wick, because if you have a soft wick, then the wick is gonna bend while you're trying to touch it on the board. But I have a very stiff wick here, and the stiffness does help a lot to keep the wick straight so it can properly desolder. Uh, what I wanna do now is go under the thermal cam and monitor heat transfer between the two tips. The one that we last used, which is the conical tiny tip, and this one here, the 10 millimeter tip. I wanna see how heat transfer works. So that's gonna be a nice way to see the difference between a conical small tip and a 10 millimeter big tip and monitor how heat transfer works. Northridge fix? We do, yes. We can, we can. So let's monitor the properties of both tips under a thermal cam. I'm gonna start with the last tip that we used in the previous video. If you look up the soldering using hot tweezers, we used conical tip that's used to remove SMD components. So we're gonna use that one. Let me show it to you on camera quick. It's gonna be something that looks like this. It's the conical tip. And this was good enough to desolder the solder of the pads when we worked on the Samsung 12.2 inch tablet. Let me cut a piece of wick. And we're gonna hold it with the tweezers like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch that piece of wick onto the metal shield here. We're not gonna touch the tips of the tweezer onto the shield, it's only the, the wick. So it's like doing this. And heat from the wick is gonna transfer over to that metal shield. And remember that metal shield is connecting to ground, so the board is gonna start to absorb the heat. Uh, the metal shield itself may not get hot because the board will be absorbing all that heat since the shield is connected to ground. So we're gonna monitor uh, the heat transfer of this tip versus this big tip okay so let's go ahead and do that we're going to start with this conical tip here let me turn on the thermal cam metal shield is right over here it's this one here i'm going to turn on the fume extractor because we're going to apply so much heat onto the wick it's going to smoke right away 
we're going to set the temperature to 450 degrees for both tips. I turned on the hot tweezers. And as you can see under the thermal cam, hot tweezers is very hot. We need to turn the fume extractor so we do not inhale all that smoke. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is touch the wick onto that metal shield. And the wick is touching the metal shield. And we can see how heat is transferring on to the rest of the board. The only thing touching the metal shield is the wick. I'm going to keep it for a little bit more. Okay, so that's the heat that was transferred onto the board using the conical tip, the small tip. And heat quickly dissipated because the board is absorbing the heat, so it cooled it down. When the color gets very yellow or even white, it means the area is very hot. Right now, we just see slight redness. That means the temperature is probably between 87 to 105. The blue shield is probably less than 87 degrees. Now I'm gonna switch over to the big tip, to the 10 millimeter tip. We're gonna keep the temperature the same, 450 degrees. And let's monitor heat transfer using that tip. Are we gonna see any difference? Is heat going to transfer faster? So now we're going to hold the wick with the big tweezers. And I'm going to touch the metal shield with the wick. And just look at how fast heat is being transferred onto the board. All I'm doing is touching the wick on the metal shield. Look at how the white is spreading all over the board. That's a huge difference compared to the other tip that we used. The other tip was sufficient enough to desolder solder off the pads when we used it last time, but this one, I would say is about 10 times better. I'm gonna remove my hand and look at this, almost half the board got hot. And this is just by touching the solder wick onto that metal shield. And look at how long it's taken for the board to cool down because there's so much heat on that board. And honestly, we have to be careful when we use this tip. Although it's very big, very nice, and it transfers heat really good, if we keep the wick on that board for a long time, let's say I'm using this tip to the solder, solder balls of pads of the board, and I keep the wick on the board for a long time, and it's gonna start to liquefy other solder on the board. So there is more chance that we may knock off nearby components by mistake. But if we go in an up and down motion, just brush solder balls to wake them off, desolder them. We do not run into the risk of knocking nearby components because not enough heat transferred to the rest of the board to liquefy solder so that we knock off nearby components. So you can see a small tip compared to a big tip using the same temperature makes a huge difference. With the big tip, I'm able to quickly desolder solder off pads with the smaller tip, it did fine. Solder pads were small and uh, this tip worked fine. But now if we use that tip, it's gonna work even better. It doesn't matter if you apply 20,000 degrees Celsius, which is not possible to a tip, it's not gonna transfer heat faster than a big tip being at 450 degrees. Both tips were at the same temperature, but the bigger one transferred more heat because of the bigger surface area. And that's how it works when you are dealing with soldering iron tip or hot tweezers tip or whatever the case may be. I see sometimes a lot of people, they use a tiny tip trying to desolder a big HDMI port. It doesn't work because you can put that tip on the HDMI port for five minutes and it's not gonna do anything. You need a bigger tip so you can get more heat transfer. And uh, that's why you have to know what tip to use for what job. And I hope I got the point across. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click on that bell icon next to the subscribe button if you want to be notified when we have a new video. And I'll see you in the next video.